This video is probably one of the most important videos you'll ever watch. Not only to improve your golf game, but to improve your life. How can I say that? Because this coach has agreed to sit down for a three-part series. This coach that has worked with world-class athletes, he was a part of FC Barcelona, and there he's worked with probably some of the greatest soccer players in history. He has worked with some of the greatest hockey players in history. Stanley Cup champions, Grey Cup champions. He's worked with World Cup champions. He's even worked and coached numerous gold medal athletes from around the world. Now he's turned his focus to golf and what his understanding of the human body can do for you is quite amazing and honestly simple. Things that you can do in your own home that will have a dramatic impact on your game and your life. If you will take the time to watch this video, I guarantee that you will learn something that can have a major impact. In fact, you'll have the opportunity to work with him for free. Doing the same routines and the same exercises that he has used to not only work with me, but great athletes, world-class, world champion athletes. All right, well, Thomas, thank you very much for joining me today. I really appreciate the time and the opportunity for my subscribers and people that watch my videos to learn a little bit more about you and what you're able to do, what you've done for me and what you can do for them. Well, thank you for having me on, Frederick. Absolutely. So in the intro, of course, we kind of covered all of your history of all the great uh, organizations that uh, you have worked for and uh, that you've had a number of athletes that have been very successful at the highest level, including gold medals in the Olympics, Stanley Cups, uh, and all walks of, of different types of sports. So what is it that they come to you for or that you do that is different than your typical fitness coach or strength and conditioning type of uh, coach? Well, the way that I look at sports is in order to enhance performance, there's really two things that we need to do as an athlete. So if I'm an athlete, I want to become really good at a sport. I need to one, and most importantly, play and practice a lot and two, become more athletic. Now, playing and practicing a lot and becoming more athletic is kind of where I differ in a, in a lot of ways from other, I guess, coaches, is my focus is on improving posture. By improving posture, you improve movement, you become more athletic naturally, you become stronger, faster, and more coordinated, and you also increase your capacity to practice more. Nobody became good at any sport in the gym. You become good at your sport by practicing your sports. And what I do is allows people to have more productive practice. So having been with you and worked with you for some time, um, I know that there can be a bit of a language barrier here for some people. And uh, so um, uh, I don't mean to be rude, but there's going to be things that you're going to say that I'm going to go, wait a minute, I think we need to clarify. And the first one is this term of posture. Um, of course, you know, I think that generally when people think about, look, oh, we need to improve your posture, you're talking about putting your shoulders back and like standing up straight and all that, but that's not really what you're, the posture that you're talking about. What is it that you're talking about? Yeah, that, and you're right. So when I think about posture, what I'm talking about is, and I'll give you a definition here, is the independent and interdependent alignment and functioning of our skeletal system, nervous system and muscular system, okay? So it's all of those subsystems working together to create efficient movement. And, and I think of the body as being the human movement system. And again, that human movement system is comprised of those three subsystems and we optimize each subsystem to optimize our movement and optimize our posture. So it's it's much more sophisticated than then sitting up straight at the dinner table. Right, it's really more about everything Work, working properly and 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 uh, and properly meaning the big muscles are doing what the big muscles are supposed to do and not the little muscles and that one muscle on one side of the joint isn't 
like completely overtaking the muscle on the other side, which causes dysfunction. That's so, right. And so when we isolate a joint, every muscle around that joint has a determined role as like decided by, you know, the hand of God. Certain muscles are prime movers. Other muscles are synergists and other muscles are stabilizers. So prime movers dominate a joint action. Synergists help the, do the, the prime mover move the joint and, and stabilizers stabilize the joint and the body while the synergist and prime mover move the joint. And so, yeah, what happens with bad posture is those roles usually get reversed. The synergists usually become the dominant muscle and the dominant muscle takes a back seat and that creates instability, creates inefficient movement, a decrease in performance and injuries. So really, instead of like the major muscles, literally, in many cases, literally the bigger muscles, the more powerful muscles are not actually being utilized or utilized properly where some other muscle that's smaller for some reason for whatever that reason may be is really overworking so you're not actually using your engine to its fullest it's kind of like you put a dampener on one part of it and something else is struggling just to keep up so yeah you might be able to walk but it doesn't mean you're doing it efficiently you can take the club back but it doesn't mean that you're doing it well or getting the most out of it so yeah, when, your body's your body's found a compensatory pattern that lets you get through daily activities, but in doing so, has decreased your athleticism, increased wear and tear on your joints, and set you up for injury. Right. So this was really obvious to me when uh, you first did an assessment of me. So when we when one of the very first things that you asked of me um, as a one on one coach that you wanted to see me do some very simple movements. So which was standing there supposedly upright with my arms straight up, supposedly straight up beside my ears and just squat down and come up. And the reality is there's supposed to be a certain sequence or way in which you do that. Now I went up and I went down, but I did not do it very well in that it was kind of a little bit clunky. So that meant that there was something wrong, like something was not right there. Is that correct? That is right. And so certain muscles around joints, every joint, the dysfunction. So when I'm looking at dysfunction in the muscles, what I'm looking at are length tension relationships. So every muscle has a specific length and tension that it performs best at where it has its highest force output, its greatest coordination, and its fastest reflexes. If a muscle's length tension relationship changes in any way if it becomes too long too short overactive or underactive its force output goes down its coordination goes down and its reflexes slow down and so when i see you do an overhead squat i can tell how the muscles around a joint how their length tension relationships have changed by the way your joint moves as you squat and that identifies where your imbalances are and then we can implement a corrective strategy to fix it. So I, I've seen this firsthand in, I'm going to say three major ways in the past year. The first one is extreme back pain, back pain that I have lived with since I was in my early twenties, which is now almost 30 years ago. And I've been to had MRIs done and I had both five bold my bottom five discs are bulging in the top three in my neck as well as a bone spur as well as fibromyalgia as well as a number of different things and i've lived with that pain but by coming to you while well, i have those kinds of issues and i would go to a chiropractor and she would keep putting me back to where i was supposed to go the reality was is that the muscles in my body were actually moving and creating a lot of that pain and that Probably most of us do, especially now, but if you work, most people that work uh, uh, in offices and things are sitting a lot and that that was and still is my biggest problem. So the muscles on the front side of my hips were completely different than the back side, and that was actually creating an awful lot of pain for me, which I guess we'll get into. But as it relates to golf, I mean, a couple of other areas that happened to me was you know, I have struggled with trying to keep my left arm straight when I go back. You know, in order to keep 
a, a consistent swing and being able to deliver that club exactly back, you want to minimize, you know, movement and changes. So changing the length of that, you know, the, the arm that's going out, of course, creates more difficulty in returning it. And I've struggled with trying to get it back. And there are move, moves that I can do to try and stretch that and get that back there. But what I've come to learn is, is that not, that not, what I've come to learn is that my arm not being able to be straight has a lot to do with the imbalance between the muscles. So, so for everybody, you know, I mean, you think about it, your arm contracts because of a muscle here and it extends because of a muscle here. So if one muscle is dominant and the other one is passive, then really it's, it's not in a very neutral position, which would be just kind of straight. It's where, that's what it should be. Right. And, and so because of that, that that's what made it hard. Yeah. You can work on trying to straighten your arm and the swing, but if you don't address this issue, you're going to continually have that problem unless you're going to literally try and think about stretching that out each time, which of course we don't want to do. And it's not a, it's not really a mechanical issue. It's just a structural problem. And I think that's kind of the point of what, why I think it's really important for people to understand you and what you do is, is that there are so many things that can go wrong in your swing that are causing you problems in your game to be consistent because not because you're not trying or because you're not practicing, but because you just have imbalances in your body that you could address pretty simply, to be honest, your program has been on for a long, quite a while now. These are very simple things to do that can create a lot more balance in, in your game. Absolutely. And when you're talking about these imbalances and relating it to sitting a lot, you're right. So when we, when we're in a static position, for a long time, and most of us that's sitting, certain muscles in our body become adaptively shortened. So because we're in one position, just like our mom used to say, if you make that face, it's going to stay that way. She was right. Yeah. <laughs> so like you were talking about, Frederick, the muscles in front of our hips become adaptively shortened because we're sitting so much. And when muscles become short, they generally become overactive, meaning they receive too many excitatory impulses from the brain. Now, if the muscle in front of our hip is short, what does that mean for the muscle behind our hip that extends our hip? It's going to be long. And when muscles get pulled long, they become underactive. And this is a huge problem because the primary hip extensor is the gluteus maximus. And I think most people can appreciate how important that muscle is for the, for the golf swing. But it's extremely important just for everyday life because it's our primary mode for walking, going upstairs standing up even going downstairs it eccentrically decelerates us and this sets us up for what's called synergistic dominance because if our body loses force production for a joint action this is when the synergists get asked to do more and we can relate this to say like a, a, a basketball team say lebron james obviously Everything goes through LeBron James. He's the most important player on the team. But if he becomes injured, then the supporting players are asked to do more. And this might work for a little while, but eventually you're asking them to do more than they're capable of, and it's going to set you up for failure in the long term. And that's what's happening around our joints. The LeBron James of movements, our gluteus maximus around our hip, for example, have become underactive. They're not doing as much. We're asking the supporting muscles to do more. And we end up injured and we end up with a decrease in performance. Yeah, I know one other uh, thing that that I've, I've heard you say a number of th times that, you know, many injuries that we suffer are a result of a muscular issue. And last year I had this in a couple of instances. I had both of my elbows come out of joint, which was due to, uh, well, I had a number of muscles that were frozen in my arms, basically. And I had my kneecap come out of joint, which, you know, what Thomas does is great, but, you know, people are like, well, I have a chiropractor and I've had a chiropractor, but, but, and I've had a masseuse, a really knowledgeable masseuse, but Thomas is kind of like that, that really key thing as to why. So I would go to the chiropractor and she would constantly be having to 
rotate my lower tibia left leg. And it was always like, why is this such a problem, right? And like, why do we do this? I go in here three times a week and each time she's got to adjust it. Well, then my kneecap went out. And my kneecap went out because the masseuse ended up finding that my Achilles and that was actually frozen. So it was the muscles, because it was overactive for whatever reason, you know, what, what something happened either in the way I was practicing or some move or I overworked it, I did something that finally it just got to the point where it, because the kneecap floats by the muscles, it just literally pulled it right out. And it wasn't until we got that to release and got this back into balance, not through surgery, it was just, I had to return the balance in my muscles and I had to do the same thing with my, my elbows, which I still fight with. I don't know why. I don't know if it's a typing thing. And and guys, this is not like, well, I haven't been injured or I haven't been in a car accident or I didn't like I haven't either. Right. I, I've I've sat at a desk to work. And between that and hitting balls is where this stuff flares up. And, you know, and for those of us that are a little bit more hardcore, that like just because I'm uncomfortable or I'm tired or it bothers me or it hurts a little bit like that's just part of the game. Well, it's also if you're not in the right position where for me it turned into injury because it just got overworked without actually addressing the issue. And that's for I mean, if you want to become really good, I mean, one of the hard things is that you talked about that you have to be able to practice a lot. Like if you if you want to be good, you have to put in the time. But in order to put in time, your body has to be capable of putting in the time. And that is not a mental, th I mean, it can be a mental, but it's not just about like, well, I'm just going to power my way through it. It's like you literally have to have your muscles in a balance where they don't start to seize up because you're using the synergistic muscles all the time for whatever reason improperly. And this is what I had when I first came back to golf a year and a half, a little over a year and a half ago, and the following spring, that was my problem. I couldn't practice more than an hour and a half two hours maximum before my back was in so much pain that I just had to stop. Now, it's not that the spine or the nerves or anything like that necessarily moved anymore. It was ended up being just a muscular issue, which I was really surprised about. And guys, you got to understand, I have been on muscle relaxers, painkillers, and anti-inflammatories, along with some other stuff for more than 10 years. And so I can do all those things, but it wasn't actually addressing the issue. And, and that's what has happened when I've come to start working with you is to understand that. And every time when I start to really feel the pain I have in my back, I recognize that it's not for me. I know it's not what well, may be a nerve type thing. I know that a lot of times if I relax those muscles, which are attached to all these bones, like that goes away. And, and as proof of that, you know, when I first started working with you, Thomas, I was going to the chiropractor. I have a special plan with my chiropractor where it's a monthly fee. And she didn't expect me when she created this monthly fee thing. You can come in as much as you want. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> and I was literally going in three, four times a week because I was in so much pain. And that was the only thing because I knew I had to keep myself, you know, I couldn't let myself get farther and farther out of whack. So she would kind of put Humpty Dumpty back together again. And then I would go out and do things and I would rip myself apart and she put me back together again. And I haven't been there for a couple of weeks. Like lately, I haven't been because I just haven't had any issue. Of course, it's harder now to get out and, and the structure of doing that is different. I can still go see her. And I still do, but I just don't have to go there as often because the problems that I felt that I had, I don't have. And when I go to her, she goes, she used to have to fix four, five, six things. My chiropractor isn't someone that just goes through a series of movements regardless. She looks to find things that are out of alignment and she only puts those things back. And so it would be common for her to do this for five or six different areas or that she needed to put back into position. And now it's... If when I go in, it's one, you know, it's rarely more than one unless I've done something, which usually means I've been sitting around in, in a cockeyed position and I've used my muscles incorrectly. So I think it's really important to understand from what I've learned that that this is, you know, those back problems affected my way of life, my ability to interact with my kids, uh, to just just to be a more pleasant person, to be quite honest, because 
you know, when you're in pain, like your, your, your mental state is different. You know, you're just not as happy. And when you, and, and my wife would be like, Oh, you're in pain, aren't you? I'm like, yeah. And I just don't have those issues as much. Or if I do, I have a very simple routine with the stuff that you have that I can go to right away. And that helps to restore a lot of that balance again. It's definitely helped me in my game because I've been able to practice and I've never, ever since we started working, I have never been limited in my practice because I was in pain or I wasn't able to do something because my body was essentially, I think, seizing up. So, um, so look guys, this is what we're going to do. Thomas has been gracious enough to, uh, allow us to talk about a few more topics. So over the coming weeks, we're going to keep covering different topics. Uh, I believe the next one we're going to talk about is how to increase speed in your swing without actually going to the gym and like building muscles because very simple things to do. We're going to cover things like some simple things you can do at the course when you get there to warm up and get yourself a little bit better prepared. So um, really nice things. And then we'll probably talk about a few things. I know, Thomas, you've covered simple things like if you're not able to keep your arm straight, you know, what are some very simple things you can do? Um, he has a lot of different routines. We're going to put some links down below. Definitely click on them and you're going to see some of these routines. He also has some stuff that talks about that you, what you can do to help with a hook or with a slice. But here's the thing. If you want, I believe uh, Thomas has an offer for you guys for his site. First of all, understand this is not an Thomas is not paying me in any way. Uh, I'm not making any commissions in anything for me. Uh, I think it's very important for Thomas to become known because this is life changing, been life changing for me. And I think if you'll take the time and I challenge you to take the time to actually listen to what he has to say and try it, I think you'll be amazed. And I know it will help your game. So I know, Thomas, you said you had something that you wanted to offer them. Yeah. Well, first of all, thank you for the for the kind words, Frederick. And for the the people that follow Frederick or are watching this video, um, if you go to my website, trainfully.com, and there'll be a link below, and enter the discount code, a golfer's walk, you can get the actual routines. There's 20 follow along routines that I use with professional golfers to improve their performance. You can get those routines for 40 bucks. 40 bucks. 40 bucks. Wow. <laughs> wow. All right. So that's awesome, and I really thank you for offering that. But hey, guys, look at we're actually going to give you an opportunity to do this at no charge. So I'm going to give away uh, an opportunity to work with Thomas and, and with his videos on his site. That will be it'll be a lifetime thing. So you'll always be able to go back there if he expands it. You'll have it. You're going to have those videos that you can watch anytime. For me, I have a similar type thing on my laptop. I can do it 10 o'clock at night, six in the morning, 12 in the afternoon, whenever. It's really nice. And um, so we're going to give one of those away. But here's the key. You're going to have to remember a couple of things. In this one, you're going to have to remember two different words. I'm going to give you one of the words right now, which is train fully. All right. And it's T-R-A-I-N-F-U-L-Y. And then in the very next video, we're going to give you a second word. So I need you to put that in the comments and we're going to select a winner from that. Now, when you list it in the comments, you're going to have to tell us why you want this system as well. All right. So for now, thanks guys for watching it. Make sure you subscribe so you can see the next one. Until next week, enjoy the walk.